Okay, guys, today is the 30th of August, 2021, Monday. Jackson Hole is over, okay? Market is expecting further upside. So apparently now, right, this is the thing that everybody's uh, talking about it and undeniable, right? Today, we'll also be covering this little part here. Okay, all right, we're covering that what is, is ongoing right now and what is the take of the major market analysis, uh, their view on the market. Okay, all right, so um, of course, this is a joke once again, as usual. The end is near joke versus the paper is near rich joke, apparently. All right, so we all do know that the Jerome Power did talk about tapering and he really recognized that it will come. But what the market is seeing that is it will come, but they're not really concerned by that because they are now focusing on the word interest rate instead. So as long as the interest rate factor doesn't come in, tapering is just reducing the amount available. It's still going to be pretty bullish for the market, which I totally agree with you if you say that because uh, that's what I mentioned back uh, early last week. And of course, Jerome Powell says that he do see some tapering. He already said but then there will be much ground to cover before any rate hike. Now, we know that the way, the way is that you have to do tapering first. Then after that, we have interest rate. If they want to hide interest rate, if they only want to hide interest rate. But of course, if the problem is that the interest rate factor itself is not that easy to, you know, um, to adopt it, then of course, the tapering can still happen, but without the interest rate hike. And because of that, that means cost itself is still going to be at a low pace. Hence, therefore, the market is buoyant towards that. That's why it was a considered a dovish tapering speech on Friday. Okay, so Jerome Powell has propelled the market higher. We saw the, the Dow Jones trading new um, near to all time high, but S and P five hundred and Nasdaq hit all time high. And of course, to Jerome Powell, he mean he said that all right employment gain have come faster than expected, which is good, and this gave the very positive feel of the market. Okay, the market likes it. So before we go to the charts again, once again, uh, please understand this. My learn, my sharing itself is for learning aid purposes. If you accepted the above, you identify me. All right. So to be a really successful trader and investor, who remember March 2020? Now, if you remember that, you will know that that day was really a terrible day. Everything was down. Apple was down by 12%. Amazon was down by 8%. Google down by 10%. Microsoft was down by 11%. But if you actually went in to buy during this moment, Wow, you would have actually made back 100% right in just one and a half year later. That means that today, August 2021, whatever you invested to the five banks, you will make back 100% rather easily. So 100% gain in about one and a half years is a very good return. So what I expect to you is this, buying will always win the short selling. It's just that now the market is kind of real, real at a very high level. To buy and sell, you go slow. But if any time there's a pullback of significant, value, then it is always good to look into the buy side. This is what I've been saying and I've been explaining to a lot of people, despite, you know, people have been saying that, I'm saying that, right, that will be a pullback. But once a pullback comes in, uh, you must understand that the market will look to buy. And especially now, with Jerome Powell saying all this thing, it is very clear that any pullback will become a buy situation, okay? All right, let's study the chart once again. The bull goes move, the bag goes grew, and the lemming goes is different this time. Let's take a look at the market right now. Okay, first of all, we are looking at the China A50 first. Now, China A50 this morning has um, has a uh, gap down. That's interesting. You have gap down. Okay, it's down by a little bit. Okay, the MLP for today is somewhere around here at 14,942. The MA30 is somewhere around here. That is about 15,342 level. All right, surprising to see the China A50 gap down. All right, so this is the view right now for China 50. As long as it stays for MLP, it will be a buy still for the market in the whole. All right, how about Hang Seng this morning? Hang Seng this morning also gap down. It's very surprising, okay? Now, Hang Seng this morning also gap down this morning. All right, it's supposed to gap up, in fact, okay? But it's now um, trading at about the MLP level. Let me just look at MLP level. Now, apology if you don't, I don't sound any form of enthusiasm today because the definitely the modern <laughs> jab is taking a bit of my breath away. Okay, so today the 25,385 is the MLP level. All right, 25,385. Okay, that is the MLP level. And um, this is the MA30 level. Okay, so what is here is that as long as the Hang Seng can stay above MLP, 
the Hang Seng still probably looking towards to upside. Okay, all right, MLP, all right, somewhere around here. So if you look at the okay, read up for you first, um, Hang Seng MLP is estimated at twenty five thousand three hundred and eighty five. Okay, all right. Then if you look at the today's market. Okay, this morning, the Hang Seng in our TWB chart, the opening price is between pivot one and pivot two, but generally closer to pivot one. And KSI is gray in color, so which means that the downside pressure is there. KDR minus one to KDR minus two is kind of expected from the market later today. And this morning, the market purposely have touched the pivot one and pullback. Now, this is a pullback of significant. So if, if the market did a CCYR traded pivot one and the KSI is red in color, that is a good chance to see a market pulling back by at least KTR minus one. So let's take a look at the five minute chart, shall we? Okay, this morning, almost immediately, the market opens only straight away crash down to KTR minus one. So which means that the downside has been traded. Okay, so which means that for those who are doing the intraday daily bread on the Hang Seng, uh, you have technically finished your day for the short side, unless you're looking for the market to recover and breaks above P1. Now, of course, if the market breaks above P1, it'll be above 4P and above P1, then there is a possibility to see Hang Seng trading 35,502 uh, level because that is the KTR plus one. So if let's say you're looking at the market to recover for the Hang Seng, then once you cross the OP, I, I strongly believe that it will go to 25,502 level. Okay, so that will be the upside potential for Hang Seng. Okay, so let's see, let me share you on this. Let's give me a short moment. Huh? Let me just uh, lower down my volume on my handphone. Okay, done. Okay, all right. So that is the Hang Seng for you to take note. Uh, for those who are doing intraday, take note this one here. Okay, let's look at the Dow Jones, shall we? Now, Dow Jones, uh, we can see very beautiful, very beautiful movement in the Dow Jones. Why do I say that? Well, first of all, you can see on Friday, the Dow Jones opening price was here, right? It was marginally above the MA. You, realize, you notice that the market moved already. So the the, the blue line is where the MA was on Friday, all right? And the MA was at 35,204 um, 35, back then. Remember on Friday, the MA number was 35,204. And um, what you saw on the screen is now that the market opens above the blue line. And then it purposely came down, hit the blue line. And when it hit the blue line, immediately after the hit of the blue line, it recovered. And when it recovered, it went back above OP. Now, this is a very bullish movement, very bullish. So if you remember that I showed you how to do it on MA, right? If this is MA level, if the market comes down and break above, this is a buy. If the market breaks and come down, this will be a sell, all right? So this is how it works, very simple, right? So because of that, if you now look at the, if you look at on hindsight, um, on the 15 minute chart, and you look at what happened on Friday, you will see that the incredible point here, the point is this, is that the market went down below the ME initially. And then after that, it, it just basically toggled for a while. And once it crosses the MA 30 level on a day chart, ignore the, the two other lines, because these are all the interval lines. We don't bother by that. You notice that this is where, if you are a buyer, you can go in to buy the Dow Jones here based on MA30 and your stop loss just put slightly at the day low and this will be your entry and your stop loss. Now look at it, for the Dow, it went up all the way to where we saw today and you can see how many times is this? One, two, three, four, five, six. 
So which means that if you put $100 here as a bet, you will probably make as much as $600 if you just hold a position all the way towards the end of the day. So this is again pretty, of course, on hindsight sharing, but it is this how you use the MA30 to trade in the market. And that is why uh, in our version 5 itself, right, we want to advocate, you know, you guys to trade MA32 as one of the technique because nowadays more and more traders, uh, so more and more algorithm are using MA and if you combine this MA with our TWB system, it'll be wonderful because let me show it to you now. Um, the level is 35,204, right? Now, if I put the MA30 into the Dow Jones on Friday, okay, this is uh, the Dow Jones now, and I put the level, 35,204, okay? And I leave it there. And if you look back again on chart, you can see that, okay, can you see now? That this is the 15, oh, 15 minute chart. You can see that the wonderful part of this happening, the market came down, all right? And then the CCRY came beautifully, strike smack at where it's supposed to be. The CCRY came in exactly at the 35 uh, MA30 level. So if you based on the CCRY, you would have purchased it, all right? Ignore the KTR because these are the KTR for today. But more important thing is that you do see that the boys really came in, the KSI turned green, and that was a buy. And of course, on hindsight now, the, the Dow went all the way up. So basically, if you follow through, you have made some money from the Dow. Okay, so that is how you actually combine the MA30 together. All right, that's why we are going to infuse this MA30 line into the system so that you guys can benefit out of it. Okay, so got the idea? All right, if you got the idea and you heard me loud and clear, please key number one right now, number one, yeah? Okay, excellent. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, I'm okay. Don't worry. Yeah, I, I'm just feeling <laughs> jaded. But I'm fine. Don't worry. Okay, let's continue. Okay. Okay, so based on what we saw on the Dow chart, we already see that this is why it's so important to use the MA30 properly. Hence, therefore, today MA30 will be somewhere around here. Number is 35,242. Write down for you. The MA30 number for today will be 35,242 level. Okay. So which means that as long as the Dow Jones stays above 35,242, the Dow will still be up. And even if the Dow pull back to 35,242, it could be a very good level for buying, okay? So you got an idea? So it work both sides and you must remember that. Okay, unless the market really dip below 35,242 and shows no signs of recovery, uh, then maybe you can say that the market might be going down. So technical analysis basically cover both sides of the coin, the buy side and the sell side. There's no one direction that you will go there, definitely will be there, all this thing. It's not very possible, not feasible, all right? Now, this is the MLP for today, and that's 35,331, okay? All these are estimate level. If you want to be precise, you basically do your own calculation, okay? 35,331. Of course, later on, when the version 5 is ready, the MLP will be automatically calculated for you. And of course, again, that will look, make the chart looks beautiful, right? Uh, 35,331 is the um, is the MLP level that is being treated, is MLP for today. So what do I see? Now, of course, we can see that we have a BMB structure two trading days ago. So therefore, the upside can be, you know, upside can be all the way to extension RL. All right, or it can go down to the SL level, but now if you have tested the RL, so that means that if the market can stay above the RL level, we should see it going higher. So how high can this go? Well, apparently from what we're seeing right now, the high can go up all the way for the Dow Jones, all the way to 35,770. 
Okay, the upside could be 35,770. So that is the upside potential for the Dow Jones. And that will definitely means a new record high again. Okay, so these are the level to watch out for. Let me just write it down for you. Okay, Dow estimated MLP is um, 35,331. The MA estimate is MA30. Is thirty five thousand two forty two, and the BMB extension one hundred one is thirty five thousand seven seven zero. Okay, here we here we go. So all these are the Dow Jones expectation, the levels to watch out for, and all I already typed it all for you. Okay. All right, so that is the Dow Jones for us. Talk about the Dow Jones weekly chart right now. Now the Dow Jones weekly chart is really incredible. You can see it for yourself. And I cannot deny this over and over again. I told you guys that look at the way the, the Dow really treats the opening price, the closing price of the weekly chart is really incredible. Uh, well, you can see that it purposely opened near the, 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 the long-term trend line that I draw that was weeks, weeks ago. And the way it closer was beautifully just above the short term trend line. And the market is still like, you know, converging it. So all I can tell you is this, my chart tells me that next week, not this week, next week, that is where the short term line and the long term line converge. Okay. That means that next week likely will be the either this week or next week will be a very interesting week to watch. It could be a divider. It could be a changeover. It could be a market turning around. I don't know. But the thing is this, definitely based on the chart view itself, right? Where the short-term trend line and long-term trend line meets together, usually we will see some explosive movement. So I, I don't know whether which week will be that with this week or next week, but definitely there should be some explosive movement within the next two weeks. All right. So that's the reason why I would say traders, you really need to clear your eyes on the market because you don't want to, you know, get hit. Okay. All right, I just saw the Hang Seng trading higher. Those who are trading Hang Seng, if you had heard me earlier, I've given you a little tip of the day, not to show you heard it earlier, but I can just remind you if you did, if miss it. I said that, right, if the market is to trade up, the market should be able to trade towards this KTR plus one level, and that's 25,502. So not too sure if you heard me earlier, if you heard me, you probably have uh, traded a little bit on the upside and now you already made some money like, in the midpoint range, okay? Midpoint range, okay? All right. Okay, let's look at the Dow Jones for now. Okay, for today's Dow Jones, we can see that we have a few things to take note of. Number one, the very, very important thing is the Dow Jones today opening price is above pivot one. Okay, so by opening above pivot one, above OP, above pivot one, CCRY will be a buy. And you don't need to have any trigger because by itself it's already a trigger. Okay. Now, number two is that because the opening price is very near the pivot one, and if the market goes down below pivot one, we have a problem because the KSI on Friday is a red. Now, KSI red means the market is more towards the sell side, all right? Towards the sell side. So to go down to KTR minus one to KTR minus two is a higher possibility. Now, you realize that I don't care whether the market is uptrend or downtrend. The way we structure our TWV setup and trades is always between the KTRs and the pivots and stuff like that. So regardless of whatever trend it is, if we look at it and it's supposed to sell, we sell. If the market is supposed to buy, we buy. We don't really care much of the trend for intraday movement. For Of course, for long-term positioning, you need to care the trend. That is the difference here itself. Okay, very important. Huh? So if the, Hans, if the Dow Jones drop below pivot one and we come with CCYR, I believe that the Dow will hit minus one easily. Okay, it will hit minus one easily. So let's just see what happened. If this will really do manifest, example, okay, we can see right now that this is the Dow Jones and okay, very nicely I, I draw it for you. Okay, so now what we saw in this, on the screen right now is that the current price is now touching the pivot one. 
and the OP is here, right? Okay, so by right this morning, CCRY already, you can buy the Dow Jones, which the Dow Jones went up a little bit, but not enough, and then it pulled back down. Okay, fair enough, but it's still too early, right? Then it came down to pivot one. And you notice that the market stays firmly above pivot one, as if that they know pivot one exists. And as long as the Dow Jones stay above pivot one and later on do a CCRY, it will be a buy on the Dow Jones. Now, of course, although the KTR is a red, but when the market cannot go down, then obviously it will go towards the next KTR. And next KTR will be uh, KTR plus one. And that's 35,587. Okay, so that will be the upside potential for the Dow. Now, if the Dow Jones do come down, okay, which you can't expect it because of the, if it loses pivot one and KSI is red, then the downside potential should be about 35,324. Okay, so we got that. All right, so the Dow Jones upside is 35,587. The downside is 35,334. Now, because again, I repeat, the day chart is favoring the uh, KSI rate. So the upside potential will be kind of limited. The downside potential will be higher. Okay, this is something that you have to take note of that. Okay, yeah? all, all clear on this. Yeah, yeah, since you uh, you understand, that's good. Okay. Sorry, a lot of messages coming in at the same time. But probably you know what is happening right now. So I just want to reply them. It's still part of my work. Yeah, indeed. Okay, so done. Okay, this is the Dow Weekly and the Dow Jones itself. Let's look at the NASDAQ, okay? Now, the NASDAQ continue to rally. Now, I want to share this with you. I should have, I could have find some time to do it, but sorry, I really couldn't wake up this morning. Um, September is usually a month whereby most of the funds, mutual funds will take profit in September, late September, uh, because of they need to basically do the recounting purposes and September that's why by general it's always a weaker month among the rest of the 12, among the 12 months and usually Nasdaq during the September month will be kind of weak so that's why I will seriously think that traders should consider to put some SWL or at this level now do consider to take some profit okay on the upside okay for Nasdaq lah, okay for Nasdaq okay let's look at, take a look here itself so this is the uh, this is the MLP this is MLP for the NASDAQ today. This is the MA30. Now, of course, at the moment now, the NASDAQ is really far away from MLP and MA30. So there's really not much concern for time being. But I would like to remind you guys is that when a market is doing something like this, so staggering, if you look at the chart right now, right, you can see that it's going at about lesser than 45 degrees angle. And this is really not, we're not kidding you. And of course, uh, you look at this is the NASDAQ high back then before pandemic. This is the low during pandemic. So look at the distance that the market has covered. It has covered almost twice, almost twice the distance that was between the highest point to the lowest point during the pandemic. So what I'm trying to say is that, right, this is really the, 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 the pandemic, right? The downside are really being dwarfed by the rally recently. It's really incredible. So now, of course, that means that the valuation itself is going to be pretty high at the moment right now. Okay, that's one view on it. Then if you look at it in a very uh, systematic trend, trend line drawing, you'll take the highest point and a link to the recent high that was set in this August. This doesn't give you, give you anything, right? If you lower it down, you will notice that it gives you some consideration of the trend. If you lower it down further, you will notice that this will become very interesting. Can you see that right now? Uh, you see that? See, first of all, if you put it up here, it doesn't make much sense. Then after that, I lower down to the this high here, it gives us a bit of insights. But if I lower it down to this point here, then you notice that almost all the highs, recent highs, are all identically uh, matched. 
And of course, if you look carefully again on the chart, you will see this interesting phenomenon that really quite interesting, All right? Can you see that? It basically spoke quite a fair bit, okay? Can you see that now? So that's why I, I'm saying that there is a small possibility that the, the NASDAQ will be going to some profit-taking mode soon, okay? You got my point, you heard me, loud and clear, yeah? That is a small possibility of this really happening. Okay, I can see that there's some profit taking now in the market. In fact, okay, so got a buy. Okay, so this is a very interesting chart view uh, on a NASDAQ. Okay, so I'm gonna put it there. Uh, Nasdaq now at 15,430. I suspect there will be profit taking soon. Now, even though if the market comes down, right, you also notice that when you hit the MA30, it rebounded. Lah. So let's say we do a projection here itself, right? That means the MA30 now is 15,159. Okay, so I'm going to write it down for you. The current NASDAQ now is 15,430 level, right? Current today. Today is the um, 20, 30th of August. Okay. I suspect that there will be a drop down to MA30. And that's about 15,159 range because I don't think it will happen in a single day, but maybe of course a few more days. So that means this number will vary, like you will move around. But we're talking about basically MA30. Okay. So MA30 will very will move along the way, but I kind of suspect that it should be coming down to that level. And if that level get triggered, then of course the market will likely choose to rebound. So I would say that if the market come down to here, 15159 is kind of suspectly expected to come. Okay, so traders do take note because I say tapering is coming because already what Federal Reserve say, but they put it across is that it's only end of the year. And also they also tell you that there'll be no interest rate. So the market buys on that point that there is no interest rate, but you cannot deny that the tapering is still going to come in. So that means that basically, uh, counters like this uh, uh, NASDAQ, right, will be affected. And of course, again, I say September, usually there will be some profit taking by the mutual funds. So there will be another round, there should be another selling wave. But that one, maybe if you want to hit 15159, then we will get it again. Okay, all clear? All right, if everybody clear, please key 15159. Okay, 15159 NASDAQ. Okay. All right, at least I'm going to give, at least we, we take note of this number. Uh, if you can able to, if you, if you are hearing me now, all right, just remember that NASDAQ 15159 is today's number, but uh, I don't think there'll be much changes over the next few days. All right, a period of profit taking is always healthy. And I think that once we reach a point itself, right, it'll be a good buy level. So next time, if you see the NASDAQ really come down to the MA30, please kindly, gently remind everybody in a group chat. Can we do that? Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, someone text me on the site. Say that, Kel, I think I prefer your this voice like that. Slow and steady, not so up and down. We can follow you better. <laughs> okay, maybe, yeah, maybe. Okay. okay, so now we have the Dow Jones trading below the MA, oh, sorry. We have the Dow Jones now trading below the P1, eh? so traders will be careful, okay? Now, Hang Seng has really, wow, what happened to Hang Seng? Okay, Hang Seng went up to the halfway mark, couldn't hit the level, and then pulls back all the way now, smashing down to KTR minus two. Now, do remember, I already told you guys, Hang Seng KSI is red in color, so going down to KTR is two is possible. And what's amazing that it stopped perfectly. The low of the day is near to the pivot two, as if that they know pivot two exists. But um, I told you before for Hang Seng, I still, when, remember the a few days ago, I told you, right, for those are PTP train, I told you that this is a higher low formation, higher 
low formation and a KSI is red in color. For a higher low formation and a KSI is red in color, usually there will be some selling. Remember that? For those who remember that itself, right? And your PTP train, that means that your PTP train, sorry, and you remember that this key PTP. That means that at least I want to see that you remember. Higher low formation plus KSI rate, once the market breaks down, usually they'll be selling. So if you are PTP train and you remember what I say about this, then you key the word PTP. Okay. I want to just remember that. Now, because there are many times when I share things, um, I, of course, I'm basically doing this alone. I don't have time to really cover everything. But once, on, once in a while, when I see something good like this, I will always share. And of course, uh, people will benefit lah, if they actually remember that. Okay, if they cannot remember, then this is where we remind you. All right, like I said uh, during the uh, last Saturday sharing, we will do some big changes with the way we do run this academy in the coming months. Uh, because we realized that, right, we took for your survey, we really took it seriously. There were some good points that we need to really look at. There are also some very interesting points that we can actually use it in a form of guidance. So that's why, um, you know, moving forward, uh, there will be good changes for you guys. We will talk about this more when the version 5 is ready because it will be implemented along the same timing. Okay, thank you guys. Those who remember, Eileen, Carl, Judy, Eric, Jerry, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, let's continue to look at the today's, uh, sorry, uh, deviated a little bit, NASDAQ. Okay, now NASDAQ this morning, the opening price is actually a CCRY buy. Okay, the opening price is a buy because CCRY is the day chart. Nothing wrong to buy, yeah. KSI is green, fantastic. So all is good. But now the market trading below OP, so we wait for a while. If the market can stay above OP, I think very easily you go to KDR plus one and it should go to 15,526, which will create a new all-time high again. Okay, a new all-time high. Okay, so that is the uh, upside for the NASDAQ. Now, if the NASDAQ do fall, then the support for today will be 15,348, because that is the pivot to level. But because the KSI is green in color, I suspect that the downside will be limited. So earlier was the trend that I draw in conventional. Then I now look at the chart here itself. I tell myself this. Since I know conventional chart has a trend line of resistance, and today the market opening price is between the two pivot, right? As long as the market stays below OP, then there's no reason for me to buy into the NASDAQ. You got my point, right? So that is something that you can tell yourself. And if the NASDAQ want to buy, you will put, bring down the K pivot two level, and it gets supported, then you look to buy on the NASDAQ. It won't be too low, too, too long. It won't be too wrong. And in fact, you can actually buy it cheaper. Okay? Yeah. Okay, S&P 500, let's take a look, S&P. Now, S&P 500 now is trading at 45.07. Again, last Friday, we saw the new all-time high level. So let's put MLP again. Now, MLP for today is 44.91 level. The MA is about 44.52. So it's a very far distance here. So there's no reason to be panicking about. And because you can also see that um, Friday was a BNB, right? So let's bring it in. There we go. So Friday itself is a BNB. So which means that uh, to put it fair, you know, let me just, okay. That means that the upside potential, so I'll write it down for you. S&P 500, uh, M -A MLP estimate is about 41, 44.91. MA30 estimate, 44.52 and uh, BNB extension one time one will be at 45.63 BNB extension minus one time one will be 44.18. Okay, so I've given you all the technical point for the SMP also. Um, why do I want to bring out S&P? Because I, I felt that S&P is much more tradable uh, I mean, in terms of my dollar and cents. Because uh, every one point is only one US dollar. Okay, so, and the range itself is about 20 to 30 points. So, I mean, trading a 0 0.01 on AIMS will give you about 20 to 30 dollars difference. So I think it's still reasonable to trade on the on S&P 500, okay? 
Now for S&P 500, again, if you look at this uh, this chart right now, you can see that this is really incredible chart. Okay, remove all those things away. It's not going to be helpful for us. Okay, so you can you can see that these are all the lines, huh? All these lines are no longer important. We remove them first. I mean, for me, I like my chart very clean. I don't want to be like you know have a lot of charts, a lot of lines, and then cause me to get confused, huh? Okay, all right. So now everybody take a look here. This is the high. Uh, this is the high of the nest SMP. So same thing again. If I projected here, you can see that you know it doesn't make much sense other than show you like a bit of reversal support over here. Okay, but it doesn't give me any forward movement. Okay, hold on. Now, if I basically take this up and I link to this guy here, it doesn't show me, give me support again, but doesn't mean you strength. So if I put it up to all this point, uh, then you know something interesting. Okay, uh, if you notice this now, if I put it across it, it seems to be able to give me some form of the resistant guidance, but very incredibly, if I make it chart a bit bigger, oops, sorry. If you notice this, it became a like a form of a support level here, and it's go right into the MA30 beautifully. So I'm gonna just change this color to make it a bit more contrasting, easier to, understand, to see this. Not the best color. Okay, can you see that right now? You realize that the trend line that I draw and the MA30 meets perfectly. So what I'm trying to say is that, right, uh, the MA30 must be able to hold water for this S&P for these two weeks. As long as the market can stay above it, then I think in general, the market is still okay. In general, the market is still okay, but the market has to stay above the MA30 um, level. All right, so we come to this more like, when we get closer, but at least you get the feel of now you can do this. But of course, if you look at the support level, you can actually try another line and draw something like this. And you notice that every time when the market uh, hits this technical point, the S&P usually rebound. So there are two lines for you. Like, if you are looking for one's a resistant line, one's a support line. Okay, got an idea? Yeah. Okay, so that is the S&P. Let's look at the S&P in terms of the our own chart right now. Okay, now today again is the opening price above P1. So by right above OP, CCRY will be a buy. Okay, for today, SMP 500. But now it's trading below OP, but KSI is green. So probably going to be an initial take some profit first from last Friday. Then after that, maybe the market will recover again and go above OP. Now, if it goes above OP, it will be a buy again on the S&P 500. This one is very, very important. Eh? If the market stays above OP, it will be a buy on the S&P 500. This one, please kindly take note of that. Okay, very, very important. All right, let's look at the uh, the DAX market right now. Now the DAX, we can see that it's basically a uh, sideway for time being. Okay, let's look at the, first of all, the MLP for today for the DAX is at 15,817. The MA30 is very nearby, and that is about here at 15,799. So as long as the, as long as the market stays above the MLP, the market should be in general looking higher. Okay, as long as the market stays above MLP, the market should be trading higher. Okay, so that is the DEX. Now DEX is doing a triangle formation here, which some traders have observed. So um, some traders are telling me that, Cal, this is gonna be a big bull market because uh, this is a triangle. So if the market uh, basically breaks up, then the, this is gonna be going all the way new high. I, I kind of agree with that. But of course, we can also see that the market has been holding at the MA30 quite a fair bit recently. So with the what we saw in the NASDAQ movement, right, I sort of, I'll, I'll be cautious a little bit. I will watch this carefully. If the market can break, then we look for buying. 
If not, it's tough, right? If the market breaks down, I believe there should be some profit taking first before the market recover. Okay. Now, I am saying this one more time, right, guys? I am actually looking at the market to have some pullback this week to next week. Then after that, at the lower end, it's a good time to buy. Okay, good time to buy because I strongly believe that the uh, Fair Reserve will not hide rate because of what's going on. And in fact, after probably a bit of profit taking a market, they realized that they couldn't handle the downside pressure. They will still tell you that, okay, we will now probably reduce to do the tapering, but maybe much, much lesser, much, much lower. And the market will like it. And then the Dow on the US market may recover again. So this is actually a possibility that may happen. Okay. All right. So let's continue. Let's look at the China 50 again. China 50 has went down to a low of 14,692, but it's off the low right now by 100 points. So there seems to be some buying. Hong Kong, well, Hong Kong initially went down to, to 35,169, but now it's trading back to 35,340 level, quite a bit of rebound from there. So the downside pressure is there, but it's not as big as what it's supposed to be doing. Okay. Nikkei, now this morning, Nikkei is trading down. Now, Nikkei, let me just bring it to you. Now, this is the Nikkei, and we do the MLP first for Nikkei. It's somewhere around here at 27,734. ME30, somewhere around here, it's about 27,700 level. So now the Nikkei is trading below MLP and below ME30, so there should be some profit taking. All right, there should be some profit taking on the Nikkei. And if you put Nikkei into our trading chart, Today's Nikkei now, suppose above OP, above P1 should be a buy, right, for Nikkei. And the KSI is also green. So basically, it should be a very easy buy day, but you have to follow rules. Once the market goes below OP, right, by right, you cannot trade anymore because it's an uncertainty zone, okay? And KSI is green, so to short is not not the right way. So if you didn't do anything, that's good. If you shorted the market, you should consider buyback because the KSI is green in color. And you shouldn't be shorting below OP, above OP, um, you shouldn't be shorting above, sorry, shorting below OP because from OP to pivot one is the uncertainty zone. So if you are shorting it because you think that there could be a pullback, then you should consider to buy back your position. Okay. Hmm. Okay. All right. So that is all the indices for you. Let's look at the commodities market right now. Let's take a look. Okay. Now this morning go short up to. 1823 and now it's pulling back. Okay, I'm not too sure why is it pulling back, but we kind of suspected that gold will go higher today this morning. All right, so now let's take a look. MLP for today's gold is about 1804. MA200 is about 1802. Wow, okay, so we have two big numbers at the bottom, 1802 and 1804, but they're quite far away from the current price. So which means that the bullishness in the market is still generally there. Okay, the bullishness is there. The MA30 is actually at the bottom. So this is actually uh, still on a bearish mode because the MA30 is still below the MA200. But you can see that the MA200 and MA30 is getting closer and closer and closer. So we did see this before, this phenomenon. If you bring it back, okay, this phenomenon did happen before. But after that, when it was about to closure, the goal collapsed. The goal collapsed. So can we, we can, will we be able to see again? Well, I have to tell you this is not an is something that I can expect that because you see, if you look carefully on gold, uh, ever since the BNB here on gold, right? You notice that the each time the cycle high is very nicely getting lower, very nicely. Okay, the cyclical high is getting lower each time, very nicely. So I cannot deny this that if let's say later on, okay, I cannot deny this. Later on, the MA30 and MA200 get close by. Will we get to see this again? Well, this phenomenon can actually happen. And I will classify this as called a bungee jump, meaning the market will just crash down suddenly again. But maybe it's just to clear off all the weak holders and then go for this upside. It is all possible. Anything is all possible. Just that based on what we have seen before, it might actually happen. Okay. All right. That's one way to get it. Now, the other way is that now the market is on the way up already, regardless, I told you before, if the market can stay above the MA, sorry, the above the 50% mark level, right, the next Fibonacci level will be 1836. Okay, 1836, right? So it is seemingly going towards there. So maybe a bit of pullback, then the next wave should be 1836 already. So 
both sides of the coin, all right, buy side and sell side, but at the moment now, it's more towards the buy side for time being, okay? All right, so that is the goal. Now, the goal weekly chart, interestingly, has broken down the upside trend, downtrend line. So by right, we should see further upside. That's why I still think that goal will be going towards 1833 to 1836 level, all right? These are the two levels that I think goal will be going for. Okay, 1833 and 1836 level, okay? Okay, Kenna, thanks. Silver has broken the downtrend line. Sorry, the MA32. Silver, yesterday, uh, Friday, did a BNB. Today, is testing the 61.8, which is at $24.11. So, of course, by right, if the silver can stay up, then silver has the probability of going all the way to the MA200 level. And that's about $25.83. Of course, um, that is the technical point. 61.8 is $24 plus level. So it is relatively possible, right, for silver. Now, but again, if silver, uh, if gold is a bungee jump, then of course, what we will see is that the market will bring down first. But silver, I say now, we can see very clearly that it's a very strong support at the different areas here already. So which means that even silver pull down, there'll be some support to bring up again. So I really want silver to come down so that we can actually buy more silver at the bottom. Okay, all right. I say uh, end of the day is that for the market, relatively, you need it to come down a bit so that you can have a good buying position for those that you're buying for long term. Yeah, something of that moment. Huh? So many, many messages again coming in. Okay. Two two one eight to stay. Yes, my target for gold is still two two one eight. No change. Yeah, even as a bungee jump on the gold factor, I still believe that gold is still gonna go up. My my target is still the same. I believe with the dollar movement right now, it's even confirmed that I believe that the dollar will be able to go all to go down further and 2218 by March 2022, it is possible. Okay. All right. I'm still looking at that. Now, I believe the dollar will weaken towards the uh, 2022, early January. I believe the dollar will weaken quite significantly. Because when you look at it, right, Joe Biden wants to have the 1.3 trillion infrastructure and the 2.2 trillion. All these need money. The treasury will have to find money for him. So the only way is to repatriate the funds from probably the stock market and also from elsewhere and then give him the money to do the infrastructure. And as long as there's no much strong contention from the Republican side, then I believe that Joe Biden will likely continue his term. And even if he doesn't continue to term because of his health, I think Kalama Harris will be able to do that easily. Yeah, so all I can tell you is that my personal view is that the US dollar will weaken towards the January 2022 level. Okay, that's my personal view lah, on the US dollar. Okay, so let's look at the goal for today. The goal for today, the opening price is between the people one and people two, KSI screen, no blue bars at the moment. So with all this in mind, by right, today, gold should be able to trade higher, right? Yeah, so if gold goes up, right, it should go to KTR plus one rather easily, and it may even go to pivot one, one eight four zero. All right, and so the closing on Friday was above the cash RL, so all it looks good. KSI is definitely green and no blue bars at the bottom, so it's a very bullish call on the gold market. But same thing again, it has to stay above OP first as a first guidance. If you stay above OP, then yes, KPI plus one with trigger is still going to be a possibility. All right, so traders think about that for both today. Okay, we've done the market. Let's look at the crude oil. Now, crude oil this morning gap up because of the, we have the explosion, um, I mean, so the hurricane and Ida, and also there was some uh, ongoing uh, rumors say that they have a lot of production shutdown. So crude oil expand uh, up, I mean, so-called 
gap up this morning, but now it's seemingly all the gap up profit will be taken out by the market. Okay. Um, so for today, MLP for crude oil is about 68.11. MA30 is somewhere around here, 67.58. 6588 is the MA200. So for crude now, it's above MLP and above MA30, MA200 crude is still likely going to go higher. All right, but of course, a pullback like this, despite the Hurricane Ida, then maybe, maybe we want to watch the market a bit closer because when market is have some fundamental and the market take profit, right, it's not strong. Right, it's not that strong. But of course, if the market later on recover and go back above OP, right, uh, then things can go much, much higher. And of course, the seventy dollars per barrel will be likely the first target uh, for crude oil. Okay. So let's look at the crude oil. Now, for crude oil today, the opening price is between two pivot points. KSI and screen by right, it should be able to go up. But now there's some profit taking on crude oil. We wait for a while. If the market hit pivot two, which we have done. If it stays above that, then CCROI will buy towards back to pivot one level. Okay, overall it's still pretty bullish for time being. Okay, all right. So I've covered all the chart side. I covered everything. Okay, so I'm done. So we look at the second part, which is the fundamental and global news. Ah, huh? you short normal. Okay, let's go. Now, thanks a lot, guys, for last Saturday's uh, coming online. We have about 100 plus people attending it. It was a good session. I think I covered quite a fair bit, and I think that the content was quite good. And because of that itself, right, we're going to go into this thing whereby we're going to move a little bit of the alternate market views away from the MAO. Uh, rest reason is because that uh, I'm going to pay more subscription to get better information to share with you. So there's a cost involved. Number two is that, right, I also want to only benefit people who really likes it because some people don't like it. And then instead of uh, appreciating it by just keeping quiet, they kind of like start to create a bit of problem online, offline, and then, you know, it's pointless. Huh? So that's why I say that we're going to create a TWB alternate market views telegram group. There's some charges to it, but it's definitely affordable. And only if you want it, then you get involved in it. It's a channel, which means that, right, you can only have it one way traffic. But I'm open for you to ask me questions uh, individually. Okay. Yeah. So I'll talk to more about this tomorrow. Uh, today, uh, really under the weather, can't really perform that well. Okay. Oh, sorry. Now we have a good, a very important week this week. We have Monday itself, we're pending home sales already. Then Tuesday, we had consumer confidence. Then Wednesday, we had ADP. Thursday, jobless claim. Friday, non-time payroll. So this week itself is going to be a big, big, big mega week. So loads of information that we need to watch out for. So today is in pending home sales. Now you can see that the pending home sales in July and August itself, right? We don't have a very, very stable uh, movement. We have one week down, one week up, and movement like this. So of course, uh, if the pending home sales are higher than expected, then the, generally the market is still positive. But we saw the last month was one, minus 1 1.9. Okay, minus 1.9. So this time they focus a bit positive. I kind of suspect that it will happen. So maybe the market, because of that, may pull up again. But if the market is lower than 1, 0 0.5, sorry, 0 0.4, sorry, that means that the market is going to ask itself how come like that. Okay. Now, what the Dow Jones was pretty clear all the way, one way traffic for Friday. So nothing much have changed. All right, in terms of momentum, sorry, let me just change the PowerPoint again. Okay, so major average finished a week higher after Jerome Powell prepared the market for the bond taper this year. And you can see that the market really like what he said, but undeniable, I did say that Jerome Powell this time around during his speech, he did a pretty decent job. And because of that itself, right, the treasury yield also came off a little bit because that seemingly there's no rate hike. And when that happened, the market likes it. They feel that although he got expressed his concern for inflation and stuff like that, but he did a relatively good job. And even though the PCE now is really at 4.2% and it's much higher, but again, fair result feel that this is just transitory. So there's no reason for, to be worried about. He feel that right, even as a setback, it will be a good opportunity to buy for some of the fund managers. So let's review what happened on Friday. We saw the market basically recovered, but interestingly, the KSI and the rate. Huh? 
Okay, so what you can see that yes, on Friday, there was, it was, I'm sorry, uh, Friday. Now it was opening price of between the two pivot. So you need to have trigger to buy or to sell. So what we have is that the market went out first initially, but there were no trigger, so you couldn't be buying. Then throughout this area, there was no trading, no trigger, you couldn't be buying. Then after that, the only one is only when it trigger past KDR plus one, but this is not part of a CCRY, so cannot be buying. So in short, the entire entire day is all right. Other than fundamentally, you feel like buying, there were no technical ground for you to buy the Dow Jones. No technical ground. At least for the TWB system, I don't have. Okay, not a lie to you. It said that don't have, it's on have. Yeah. The goal was very clear. The goal was very clear. Above OP, above OP, above pivot one, there's only one thing to do. CCRY was a buy. KSI was red, green color, no blue bar at the bottom. So I really don't understand why people are shopping gold. All right. I really don't understand. So if you look back into the whole chunk here, yes, indeed, in the morning, there were no chance to buy. No chance because there was no color change. But then when the price came down, the question is when the CCRY come, people don't dare to buy because they see the gold coming down from the top to the bottom. They get fearful. But the point is this is cheaper to buy. Stop loss place here, and then you already make easily 1x profit. Let's say you don't want to do the first one, you wait for the second one. You can see that the market came down and perfectly touches the KTR minus one. And then it did a BMB, which is very powerful BMB, CCRY, BMB, above OP, pivot one, above OP, all right, CCRY trigger BMB, you buy. And if you buy gold, you will be making money now. So you see my point. The reason why we don't do it because when we see the signs of chart, we get ourselves freaked out. But you know that actually we don't need to really bother. And of course, at the bottom, we have the KCX really help us to give us some insights and then they go when higher. So that's why I keep on reminding you guys, you really have to trust your system. And above OP, above people one, below OP, below people two, is really a very powerful technique. All right, I say this enough, so I don't have to repeat myself. All right, some local and global news. Hurricane Ida makes landfall in Louisiana as strong category four storm. So Louisiana now we're having a category four storm. And of course, this is quite terrible. You can see that people are getting sandbags to run around to make sure that they are protected. And of course, this is like the, uh, it's a very big one because category four, right? So the last time we saw category three that devastated Louisiana again and Mississippi back 16 years ago. So Joe Biden has declared a state of emergency for Louisiana and Mississippi because the, this is actually a life-threatening storm, all right? So I hope that everything goes well for people in America. And because of that, it's all right. Oil firm slashes U.S. Gulf of Mexico output because of the powerful hurricane Ida. So now oil firm cuts about 91%. That's the reason why crude oil price went up. So that everything happened for a reason. And of course, the way it's attacking uh, is actually quite a fair bit. It's also near line of Jackson Hole area, but still supposed to be okay. Huh? Shouldn't be any problem. Now, US drone strikes as ISIS K vehicle packed with explosive in Kabul. So US actually carried a military strike against an ISIS K target in Kabul, a development that come in the final days of immersed humanitarian evacuation mission. Now, again, it's, a, like, it's something like this. Uh, you hit me, I hit you. You hit me, I hit you. So apparently now they are saying that because they saw too high profile ISIS member, they're involved in attacking. They say that they, accept, they suspect that this is the bad people and they went for airstrike and of course they died. And because more likely it's more of a retaliation of what happened back then like, over the last weekend. So, you know, when we see all this, right, we know that this is not going to be nice. And that's the reason why I believe that steel price is going higher. Now, of course, on the side note, on the COVID side, two person died in Japan after shots from suspended Moderna vaccine. So Moderna vaccine has been suspended. And of course, uh, there's no confirmation that they died because of the Moderna vaccine. But unfortunately, it's really after they took the jabs, then they got sick, they got fever, and then they pass on. So of course, for those who take jabs, if you have fever, do be careful. All right. So for me, I also didn't be doing that. Okay, so what are the reason to stay bullish right now? Well, basically, Tom, Tom Lee is very, 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 very bullish. He feel that the upside will be there. So let me bring up the video for you to watch what Tom Lee has to say. He's very bullish, that's for sure. Okay, turn up the volume to hear it out for yourself, okay? Oh, no, let me just turn up the volume for all of you too. Okay, let's go. Crypto, you're bullish on the overall 
markets, what would change your mind? Would, would it be a big rally and a shift in sentiment so that more people got as positive as you are? Uh, that's right, John. If, uh, if short interest were to collapse and people were bullish, then we know that a lot of the firepower is used up on markets, but I would guess that we'd be at much higher levels if that was the, the case. And I think if, if COVID and sort of our comfort level that deteriorates so that the economy faces downside risk, I, I think that's a headwind. But so far, uh, it really looks like the soft surveys, like the sentiment, have dropped a lot more than the actual data, which means people have overreacted in the market side to COVID. Thomas here, I always have to ask you about Bitcoin after touching 50,000. It's below 47K this morning. What's the next catalyst for the crypto ecosystem at large? Uh, well, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, foremost, I'd say Bitcoin and digital assets have really performed admirably in the face of what looked like a pretty big crackdown from China and from US. So I think there's true underlying resilience. And of course, Bitcoin now, I think, is technically recovered to some key levels. I think that there's quite a lot of catalysts in here because, you know, number one, it looks like products like NFTs, which really do improve the usefulness of crypto, have, have grown in adoption. I mean, some of the numbers are really impressive and you're starting to see some crossover investing. And then more importantly, I think that, you know, when you look at outside the U.S., crypto is your risk on assets. So I think that the fact that both China equities and crypto are rallying shows you that outside the U.S., there's actually a risk on appetite as well. Two more questions from me, Tom. I think one of your best calls of the year was really nailing that bottom on the 10-year yield around 120. Uh, we did have a few different desks this year now bring in their year-end forecast. Uh, uh, B of A today goes from 190 to 155. I wonder where you are on the 10-year, if you think that chart's going to continue to go up to the upside. And then also um, uh, on CHOP, or, or in August, you said seasonality made it difficult to be a hero. And I wonder if that narrative changes as we work our way into the fall. Uh, yeah, both good questions. And uh, on the yield, I've, we've been watching it closely. It does seem to me that uh, economic outlook is actually more resilient than consensus. I think people overreacted to like you know the consumer sentiment surveys. And so uh, we think there is upside to the yield. And I think the one five might even be low. And then with regard to chop, uh, I, I think that the move in the 10 year along with the drop in the VIX, and then now with oil recovering pretty steadily, and now we're getting into September, which historically is actually a great month for equities when you have a strong first half. I think that the sort of chop is ending. I think September should be a really strong period for markets. So I, you know, I'd expect a rally at least for the next six weeks, a pretty strong rally. Okay, so this is from Tom Lee, and he is definitely very bullish. His view on 4,600 for SMP still stands, and he believes that the upside will be there. Thank you once again for those who give me the likes button. All right, can you do the like button for me? That will be most appreciative, guys. Or just go to your middle of your chart, and there's a like button, love button, or heart button, or care button. You just click it in. That would be nice for me. All right, thank you very much. Okay, so that is Tom Lee. This video, if you cannot hear it clearly, don't worry. I'll extract it out and then I'll put it up to our uh, our, uh, our anti underside group. Right, thank you so much. Okay, so what we have done is this Tom Lee is very bullish. We have Santoli right now. He has both side views. So he feel that, right, the S&P is up by 20% this year with a single 5% pullback. So how much is left in the tank? So according to Santoli, he says, that, right, there's only three times in the last 30 years whereby the market keep on going higher. And two times it's happened in 2021, whereby the market is up three straight months with a 2% rise. So this is really a very strong bull at the moment right now, very, very strong bull. And of course, the corporate earnings seem to be far above expectation and company uh, market valuation is also very high. So now, and some more, the Federal Reserve, although they are still saying that there will be potential tapering, but still, they still gonna put a lot of money into the system, and that's why overall itself, right, it's still pretty very bullish. So the law of diminishing downturn, you can see that it's very closely from 2015 all the way. You can see that there were no pullback of anywhere near of five percent. So the last time we saw was 2020, we're down by 35 percent, and the market recovered very strongly. So that's the reason why the bullishness is there. Now, if you look at it now, right, the index since 20 uh, 2009 during the bear market has Analyze the 16.4 percent, and um, it is like a better percentage from the 1987 crash, 
So basically now the period, the period itself is almost the same day, but it's at 4,500. Trying to say is this, since the crash in 1987 and the 2009, the, the basically the, the way the, the number of days created to go to a high level is kind of near. So there is another flip side to say that the market may be near the topish side of the moment right now. Lah. So usually bull market have a tendency to end with a trailing annualized 10 years gain you know, hovering in the teens. And of course, there will also be uh, some vectors will be watch out for like positive tailwind, peak earning growth, and credit uh, peak in credit market, which we have talked about this last Saturday during the event. So now the S&P 500 now is also trading at near to 21 times, which is kind of high. Our average is about 16 to 17. And there is some guy who says that the equity derivative head of Eric Johnston says that right, 4,004 is kind of high already. And anything higher itself is time to close your eyes and take some equities, okay? All right, off the table, okay? All right, so again, all these are the two side views. One part is bullish. The other part is telling you to be very careful. And let's just go to the alternate market views to wrap it up for today. Now, this is from Morgan Stanley Research. Now, this is the early cycle versus mid cycle between the MSCI versus the quality stocks versus the Russell 2000. So you can see that there is some form of pulling back in terms of the mid cycle okay, movement. And also we do see that the mid cycle transition is showing some signs there. So normally the P ratio for S&P falls by 20% during a mid cycle transition. So far, it only fell by 5%. Contrast that with the P for the F Russell 2000 and declined by 20%. So what I think is that, right, the early sign is that the high quality names is finally taking a hit on the valuation. It means that some of the blue chip counter may be taking profit soon. And this uh, Morgan Stanley research still believe that there will be a 10% pullback by the end of this year. So I'm not too sure is it from this point here or there'll be a pullback under 10% now, we won't know, but I believe that it's slightly it's only 10% from where we are today, which is kind of like near to where I shared on last Saturday. So the view, the view is this, the Federal Reserve had not yet begun its taper. So that's why, although the taper may be inevitable, but because the current Delta variant is still moving up, so it's going to be up to, for Federal Reserve to do the trigger. And he, uh, Morgan Stanley Research Bureau says that uh, they are expecting more formal signal from Federal Reserve in, in September FOMC. La. So maybe until then it's all right, then we can see a little bit more pullback of sort. Although now the current price is kind of expensive and it's kind of crowded, you also expect that some of the counter may go into a rollback to cyclical and reopening play. So overall itself, right, it's just saying that they believe that there should be some defensive stock movements in the near term. So that's why for Morgan Stanley, they believe that there should be some profit taking between 8% to 10%. And of course, this is from a, a YouTuber to just show you the first half of the full market valuation. So you can see that right at the moment now, wow, look at it. Okay, the previous weekly two standard deviation extension above the 200 week moving average resulted in the significant uh, correction. So every time when the market goes too high, like a Bollinger Band feeling, it, it actually caused a bit of worry. But now we are way, 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 way higher. So that's why it's like not really in line with normality. The current three standard deviations above, above the 200 weekly moving now is way above anomaly. Can you see that? And of course, a 50% pullback is kind of like based on what you're seeing is possible. But uh, from the way you look at it, I think you're looking at about 30% pullback. All right. From 4,005 to go down to normality is about 4,000 to 3,300 level. Okay. So what I'm trying to show on this chart is that normally this is how chart will move. And once it hits some technical point, usually you see the some event like dot com, financial crisis, Brexit, tapering, COVID. You know, it just has something to come out. So now the market is way above it, and there's still no reason. That's why it's just like saying that it's a matter of time now. We're gonna see something out of nowhere, a black swan event, or an event that's so big itself will bring the market down. So this is coming from a YouTuber, lah, All right, using this chart to present itself. All right, that will be all for today. Apology today, didn't do a fantastic job because I, my eyes is really dropping off right now. I'm pretty, very jaded right now. Um, today is the Hang Seng Index training. Likely, we will postpone it. I repeat, we will likely postpone it. But the video on last uh, Friday is very ready. So what we will do is that we will likely pull it up 
and into our revision group for you guys to enjoy it. Then I see whether when am I physically ready, then we do the thing again. All right, so apology for today. Thank you so much for staying online. I hope you guys will make money today. This is Kel signing off. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you, Eric, Colbin. All right, all of you, thank you so much. Bye-bye.